Welcome back to the channel guys and girls. Today we're going to be doing a one year review of uh, the Riptide 24 volt Tarova. Now this is made by Minn Kota, of course and I paid about two grand for this and I didn't want this particular motor. I walked into Bass Pro last year during like the shortages of everything. There's still shortages going on. I said I want the 55 foot pound 12 volt model blah 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 blah. They're like we don't have any of that. It's not going to be in forever. But we do have this way overkill motor for my boat in the back we've got three of them so i'm like all right i'll just i'll just take one so this the part model for this is one three six three seven four one this is the 60 inch shaft the 80 foot pound and it's the ipilot gps includes autopilot but it does not have the link so i can't link it to my hummingbird to like follow contours and stuff like that which now that i do trolling and stuff would be nice but i don't really need it so let's talk about what I, I mean, let me show you the motor. I also have an install video link that I'll leave below that I installed it last year. And let me just say that I absolutely love this motor. You can just stop the video now and just buy one. Like I had the Trover before on my last boat. The spot lock is just like the best thing since sliced bread. It's just amazing. So <laughs> I'm gonna pull up some pictures right now of fish that I've caught just because of spot lock. Being anchored in like 60 or 100 feet of water um, it's just phenomenal and I also use it for trolling. So let me talk about that a little bit uh, But let me show you the motor real, real quick. Let me show you my boat real quick This is a 16 and a half foot Alumacraft. It probably weighs. I don't know Max 1500 pounds with a with a 50 horse on the back. It's not a very big boat So this motor is a little overkill the 60 inch shaft is great because I personally only weigh like 150 pounds if there's big waves that shaft will come out of the water so I had a, a 54 inch shaft on my last boat and it would pop out of the water all the time with big waves so this one does not come out which is nice it's also a downside sometimes because when you want it all the way up in shallow water it's now sticking where I'm casting but beggars can't be choosers right we have the motor here it is white it's the Riptide series which makes it saltwater approved now they do have a very small print on their website saying you cannot use the normal ones in salt water, and I know I wanted the salt water fish, so I use this for striper fishing as well, or bluefish or whatever I can catch. Um, it is super quiet, so I'm gonna put it on one right now. And you can't really, well, I'm gonna put it on two right now, can't really hear it. And I'm gonna max it out at 10. And I'm gonna show you how fast it can pull this boat something like three miles an hour or something like that and i'm kind of swerving on the river right here but it can go up to three depending on what the current's doing obviously so i have the foot pedal because which you have to buy separately and i'll leave a link for that below that's like a couple hundred bucks this is the second version which has the anchor button the first version did not have that it's got the uh the speeds here on the right and left um on the right they go up and down one through ten it's got the anchor button it's got the constant on it's got the uh, autopilot link. So what that does is you turn it on and it'll, and you put constant on, it'll actually stay in that direction based on the GPS coordinate, basically heading in that direction, wherever the head's faced, which is great. So super quiet, probably not as quiet as some of the, I guess the Ghost is maybe a little bit quieter, the Garmin one, but how I, how I deploy it and open it is just like this. Do that with one hand and it's got doesn't it's not counterbalanced what it does is has kind of like a tape measure spring in here that helps pull up that motor because that thing is actually super heavy like the head of it is you know a big motor in there and it's got the battery test feature which my batteries are not fully charged but it's showing that they are you guys can see that it's got an on and off button there it is 24 volt it's got the sleeve here which that's adjust your height. Now, I will say the one thing that's kind of irritating is let me deploy it, is a lot of my people that come in my boat don't know this, is this motor has to drop in, see that little click there? Has to drop into the key on the bottom. If not, it'll just sit there and spin, especially with autopilot on or a spot lock on and it won't lock in. And you'll be like, why is the boat drifting? And that's why. So that's kind of one irritating part, not the end of the world. Foot puddle's great. And then we also have the remote, which a lot of people, it comes with a remote, which is great. There's a bunch of, you can save tracks in here, which I never do, because I don't do that very often. It's 
got the anchor, it's got the constant speed on there. So you can set it to go 1.1 miles an hour, you can bump that up to 1.2. It'll keep that speed based on how windy it is, what the current is, all that jazz. And you can turn that off. You can do all sorts of stuff with this home button, all sorts of stuff. Um, I don't really mess with it that much. I use the remote for usually spot lock and I keep it kind of clipped to my, my hip the whole time. And the battery lasts forever. It hasn't even like gone down. It's over, over a year old. So I use that for mainly the spot lock feature, which I'm going to turn on right now, which is going to slam me in reverse here because we're going up river. So that's the general basis of like basically how it works. Uh, it's really simple. The foot steer is really simple. You got to get used to it. I wish it was slightly lower profile because my deck is not recessed, but that's just a, a personal preference thing standing on one leg that's elevated all, all the time. Now, let me show you that the fish that I caught and kind of explain what, like these are my personal bests from last year. PB crappy was bouncing around, water was like glass. I'm like, you know what, let me, this looks like a good spot. Hit, hit spot lock on, catch the PB crappy like right away. Now this is uh, Sebago Lake in the fall time and we were spot locked for over four hours on the exact same spot just hammering lakers and this is my biggest biggest laker 31 inches because of spot lock you can't i mean you can't anchor in 97 feet of water or 100 feet of water or even 75 if you want to but you get a plane way ahead and put your anchor line back and then your boat's swinging the whole time so that spot lock is amazing and what are the other big thing that i use for the Minn Kota is trolling. So a lot of people have small kicker motors on the back of their boat so they can troll and troll and troll. They have like 5.5 .5 horsepower or 9.9s. This is a small boat. The problem with that is gas prices are like 4.25 a gallon. You're gonna have that little motor running all day long. I can troll for, I don't even know, probably a whole day on, especially on winter Pisaki if it's not super windy without draining my battery. So I have two, they're kind of rigged under there cause I didn't have a lot of space in my I don't have a lot of space in my boat. Two glass mat batteries underneath there, the big ones. Those are Alpha 220s, I think. Two batteries under there that can last all day because it's 24 volt. It's just, and I can set it all the way down from like 0.1 mile an hour all the way up to like three or 2.8 as fast as my boat can go. If I bring the motor up a little bit, it can go a little bit faster. But I can key into the exact same, same rate that I want to do, speed I want to do for trolling, and I can set it on my little GPS thing and just set it and forget it. And I can also, because they give you such a long cable, what I've done before, give a long cable, is I can come all the way back here, I can sit down, have that foot pedal underneath my foot, and watch my rods back here and not even touch. I can, you know, jig my lines, I can steer the whole bolt with my foot, compared to like steering it with your hand or steering, steering it with uh, um, anything else. You just kind of like sit there and mess with it, which is great. So let me show you some straight bass that we caught basically trolling on this. And this is on a tidal part of a river, like near the ocean where the current's actually ripping. And we were just using the trolling motor to go around. We were set it to our speed and it would just bump up the RPMs if the current was going the opposite direction and slow it down if it wasn't. And then we'd hit spot lock if we wanted to. So overall, it is a fantastic motor. If you were to splurge on something for your boat this spring, it would be the Minn Kota Taroba with the spot lock. Just get one with the spot lock, you'll never, you'll never go back. I had a little cheap one on this, cheap trolling motor on this before, and I said I had to get rid of it. Yeah, once you go to spot lock, you just can't go back, especially for bass fishing, holding on points and stuff like that, it's just the best. So, I'm gonna give it 10 thumbs up. Like, uh, just an absolutely fantastic motor. There's one thing that did bother me when I first bought it was, you know, it comes, comes unassembled basically, the side covers are off, you have to take the side covers off and then bolt it down, put the side covers back on. But the prop comes off when you buy it. It's basically, you know, set aside with a little nut and bolt on it. And what they tell you to do is prop the, put the prop on and tighten the nut. And then this thing would shake, like vibrate, like, like that. I mean, like absolutely crazy for the whole last year. And I said, you know what, maybe it's the prop is dinged up and the prop is fine. So I just Googled it real quick. Says, why does the prop vibrate so bad? Well, basically the prop is meant to be on there a certain way. So they said, take it off, don't spin anything, rotate it 180 degrees and pop it back on, no more vibration. So that was one of the things that should be in the manual. It's like if it vibrates, 
take it off, pop it back on. It might be in the manual. I didn't see it in there, but it vibrated like crazy. I thought something was wrong with it. Stuff, some, some, that bearing was bad or something like that, but it wasn't. So if you want one of these, just go out and get it. I, I mean, we were, we were hammering fish on Sebago, on like a lake trout lake, where people were trolling and spending gas money and stuff like that. And we were just sitting there jigging and I probably used a, a quarter tank of gas getting from there to the boat launch uh, and, instead of trolling. So that's my review. I absolutely love it. Next boat, we'll have one as well.